Welcome to our War Within Marksmanship Hunter starter video. Whether you're a veteran player eager to get ahead in the new expansion, or you're just curious about the latest changes for Marksmanship Hunters, well, this video is absolutely for you. We're going to cover everything that you need to hit the ground running, including a look at what's new for Hunters in War Within, the top talent choices, the best gear loadouts, the most optimal races, the strongest pets, and as a bonus, we're also going to include some essential macros that you will not want to be without. And if you are ready to dominate in the War Within, our brand new update to the skill capped add-on has just dropped, giving skill capped members the best UI for PvP with just one click. We've partnered with the world's best players to ensure the skill capped UI is ready for every class in the War Within and to bring you exclusive guides that unlock the full potential of your class. From maximizing damage to perfecting crowd control and outsmarting opponents with the latest tech, we've got you covered. While everyone else is just confused, you can instantly get ahead of the curve with our guides which are designed to fast track your progress and put you miles ahead of the competition. We're even so confident in our service that we guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating or you're gonna get your money back. So why wait? Click the link in the description below now and join SkillCap today. So to start things off, let's discuss how Marksmanship Hunters are looking in the War Within, starting with what's new. Overall, Marksmanship Hunters have access to a similar toolkit that they had in Dragonflight. We've kept all the same utility and the flavor that brings players to this spec in the first place. Marksmanship Hunters now have great new additions coming in from their Clash Tree as we can now pick up Binding Shot, Scatter Shot, Intimidation, and High Explosive Trap all at the same time. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. It's important to understand that the main focal point of the War Within, and where most of the new stuff really comes from, is Hero Talents, with every class having two Hero Talent trees to choose from. Now, if you wanna opt in for our Dark Ranger build, it's important to know exactly what you're getting into. So starting on the left side, we have Overshadow, providing us with more throughput coming out of Aimed Shot and Rapid Fire. Then we have a choice, Dark Empowerment and Grave Reaper. And since the latter is focused around PvE, you're always gonna be selecting Dark Empowerment, giving you some bonus focus whenever Aimed Shot is reset. And finally, for our last node on the left side, we have Shadow Lash which gives us more burst coming out of our Dark Arrow and allows us to reset our aim shot charges quicker as Dark Arrow will now be ticking way faster on our target. Jumping up to our middle nodes, we have Shadow Hounds for your Black Arrow to occasionally spawn a Dark Hound for some bonus single target damage. And now we have another choice node, Embrace the Shadows or Smokescreen. Now, although our first pick grants us some nice sustained healing, enhancing our defensive utility can save us in crucial moments that really matter in any matchup, making Smokescreen our preferred pickup as Exhilaration and Survival of the Fittest go hand in hand with each other, giving us both effects, but at reduced effectiveness. Down below, we have Shadow Surge, and similar to our Sentinel talent located here, this benefits our AoE cleave with Multi-Shot. We will almost never make use of this in PvP combat. Now, coming over to the right side of the tree, we have Death Shade, granting us the Death Blow effects from our Marksmanship tree. This increases how much pressure we can generate through our Kill Shot procs that are usable on any target regardless of health. We also receive Dark Chains, adding on to our control as we can snare our closest target, especially if they're a melee focusing you down, to reduce their overall uptime. And now we have our last choice node, Darkness Calls or Shadow Erasure. Since we already obtain enough charges of aim shot during our rotation from Black Arrow, our preferred pickup is Darkness Calls, as you can never go wrong with some bonus shadow damage primarily onto your Black Arrow for more consistent bursts. This also makes our primary Wailing Arrow build more viable, which we're gonna be discussing later on, as we're gonna be benefiting more from its damage profile, increased shadow damage. Finally, we now have our Capstone node, Withering Fire. This supplements your single target burst by applying a barrage of Dark Arrows onto our target, affected by Black Arrow, while also providing us with a damage buff to ourselves and our pet for six seconds. 
Remember, you can find exclusive tips in our brand new class courses at skillcap.com where we're going to be releasing new guides every week throughout The War Within. Skillcap members can also unlock premium profiles ready for The War Within in the Skillcapped add-on. So don't miss out. Use the link in the description to start gaining rating today. All right, with our new hero trees covered, let's quickly go over what we're currently suggesting for your marksmanship and hunter talent trees. Our marksman hunter class and spec trees have changed drastically as we enter into the new expansion. Although marksman somewhat gets the shorter end of the stick by having to lose out on bursting shot instead of scatter shot, in the grand scheme of things here, it really isn't that big of a deal as we obtain way more abilities that help flesh out our toolkit, which include but aren't limited to survival of the fittest, which makes one of our defensive cooldowns more forgiving as it now includes an additional charge from another talent, Padded Armor, with a reduced cooldown. Kodo Tranquilizer, which is a new addition to the War Within, as a nice enhancement to our tranquilizing shot. And lastly, Roar of Sacrifice, featured as an iconic spell given to hunters in order to immune any incoming critical strike damage effect while it is active. This is castable from the hunter, even in CC, but it does require the pet to be out of CC in order to use. For our damage spells, the only one worth noting here is Explosive Shot, giving us some hefty damage after three seconds of it being on your target. Now, do be wary with Explosive Shot as this ability is dispellable and should be used a couple seconds after landing CC on healers. On the Marksman side, we've experienced a complete overhaul for node positioning and a slight amount of talent change with what's on screen now being the suggested default talent. As a whole, outside from kill zone, some of the major highlights here are a nice buff to Razor Fragments, which now generates an additional 25% damage after proccing your kill shot from the talent Death Blow from either Aim Shot or Rapid Fire and is available to use regardless of the target's health. Killer Accuracy and Streamline now require one talent point in order to receive full value, allowing you to spread out your talent points into more nodes than before. The final step in setting up our talent loadout is discussing PvP talents. Here is our primary mandatory talent you'll never play without, Survival Tactics. Survival Tactics grants an extremely high damage reduction for a short duration after using Feign Death, helping you negate a huge chunk of damage when needed. Next up, there are two soft lock talents you'll play in most matchups, which include True Shot Mastery and Chimerial Sting. True Shot Mastery reduces the cooldown of our main burst CD, and it gives us more on-demand damage when pressed. Now, on the other hand, Chimerial Sting cycles through a powerful snare, a short silence, and ends with a short damage and healing reduction on the affected target, making this super effective during the snare effect for landing traps. Diamond Ice can also be an option in Solo Shuffle or in matchups where landing CC is vital, but do be mindful that this talent makes your freezing trap last one less second. And lastly, Sniper Shot, although has suffered some massive blows, making it pretty much useless in Arena, this may make a return in Battleground Blitz for the extra range that it provides. All right, now that we understand the optimal talent choices and the reasoning behind them, the next goal is setting up our character. The first step in this process is going to be deciding on a race. Your first and most preferable option is Night Elf. Comparative to all other races, Night Elf provides the most consistent benefits, especially when using it as a second feign death against incoming spells or flying projectiles. Given a skilled enough hunter, it's really hard to find a more impactful racial than what Night Elf offers in Shadow Melt. And now as briefly mentioned here, the most notable use out of this ability is to immune some incoming projectiles or some damage, including Chaos Bolt, Storm Bolt, or Mortal Coil to completely negate their effects. Now, directing our attention to the Horde races here, Orc continues to be a pretty strong secondary option for Hunter, granting us Blood Fury as a flat on-use buff to our primary stat, always scaling the best at the beginning of every expansion. Not to mention going Orc grants you access to Hardiness for some nice stun reduction that shouldn't be scoffed at if sub rogues become the new meta. So with races out of the way, let's take a look at what's shaping up to be your best in-slot gear for Season 1. But first, since you'll likely find upgrades along the way, 
Let's discuss stat priority. Our main focus should be on versatility and mastery. Versatility is a no-brainer. We get targeted most of the time in matchups and it's an excellent stat for PvP overall. Mastery, however, continues to be an extremely strong staple for MM, giving you a flat damage increase plus some extra range on your abilities. Now beyond these two stats, focusing on adding some critical strike into the mix as you're going to be looking to reach around 20% of this stat while gearing. In combination with penetrating shots for additional crit damage off of your spells and master marksman making your crits apply a bleed, critical strike remains an integral part of your damage. And lastly, haste will be your last priority. Although haste is important to land your abilities, we have enough cast reductions to aimed shot from our talents to make this stat really not worth focusing on. Over the next few weeks, you should look to collect your PvP scaled four set with the exception of the chest, which should be Algari crafted with versatility and mastery. Every off piece should also be crafted with versatility and mastery too. And we're going to be doing the same with our jewelry, but in case our survivability feels low, we recommend using the forged gladiator's amulet just to make sure we have enough verse. Our weapon is also going to be crafted, and for our trinkets, we'll use the insignia and medallion, of course. Now, let's get everything enchanted. For your cloak, you're going to want Chant of Burrowing Rapidity. For chest, Storm Rider's Agility. Bracers, Chant of Armored Speed. Legs, Stormbound Armor Kit. Boots, Scout's March. And then for your rings, grab Cursed Mastery for both. Finally, the last enchant is for your weapon, where we suggest getting Authority of Radiant Power. Due to the addition of the Vicious Jeweler setting, you're now going to be able to add gems to your helmet, amulet, rings, belt, and bracers. One of these can be one of three unique PvP-specific gems. Out of these, we highly recommend the Enduring Bloodstone for additional survivability. For the rest of your gym slots, the Masterful Sapphire provides the best overall boost to your favorite stats. And as for your embellishments, you're going to want to use Elemental Focusing Lens on two of your crafted Algari items, but do be sure to check out our article linked in the description below to stay up to date with these decisions as the season progresses. And to cover something more exclusive to Hunter itself, let's go over all the pets you'll need for Arena. For your main pet, your best bet is to choose a Raptor, as you're going to be looking to grab the undead version located in the Shawaljai Tar Pits in Nazmir. The reason for this is that this pet belongs in the Cunning family, giving you access to both Master's Call as a freedom effect and Pathfinding for some extra movement speed. This pet also has the Mortal Wounds ability, giving you access to a healing debuff on the target your pet is attacking. Not to mention, undead raptors are immune to some commonly used CC, including Polymorph and Sap, creating more opportunities to use Master's Call or Roar of Sacrifice. Although in cases where you come across a Ret Pally, look to swap this pet out for a non-undead version, or you can also pick up a Hyena or Rodent located in the Cunning family. This is because Rets are going to be using Wake of Ashes more frequently in the War Within, and Wake of Ashes applies a lengthy 5 second stun on any undead targets, making your pet have way less uptime on your target. Now for cases where you want more defensive utility, especially in setup based comps, look for pets located in the Tenacity family that still provide the Mortal Wounds effect. This includes Direhorn, Hydra, Lizard, and River Beast. Using any of these pets grants you access to both Fortitude of the Bear, acting as another Battlemaster Trinket, and Endurance Training for a passive increase to you and your pet's health. To finally wrap up this guide, let's go over some macros you're going to find useful in PvP. First, we suggest having focus macros for all your important crowd control and your interrupts, enabling you to control off targets without the need to deselect your current target. So that's mainly counter shot, Intimidation and Scattershot. Another method of control involves using Arena 1, 2, and 3 macros, allowing you to apply CC or land interrupts on enemy players regardless of who you target. If you've played Marksman Hunter before, you're most likely familiar with the awkwardness of just waiting for your cast to finish or by moving your character mid-cast in order to activate Aspect of the Turtle. This macro removes this issue entirely allowing you to press Aspect of the Turtle without any issues. 
This will guarantee your safety during those crucial moments where you want to get your defensives off. And on the topic of aspect of the turtle, we have another macro that we highly suggest using, which involves cases where you want to come out of turtle earlier than its duration to execute your target with kill shot. Now, as a marksmanship hunter, you're going to have multiple types of utility you may want to apply on allies. And in order to streamline this process, it'll be best to use both party one and party two macros. If you're unfamiliar with these, party one refers to the person at the top of your party frames, and party two is the second person. The basic way of doing this is what you see on the screen now, where you're gonna need two macros for each ability, exactly like the example you can see on the screen now. And in cases where binds may be more of a concerning issue, one way to make this requirement slightly easier for you is with mouse over macros like the one you see on the screen now. These abilities are used based on who you hover your cursor on, which makes it more convenient in cases where party one and two macros may seem overwhelming to you. Lastly, for some nice quality of life improvements, we highly suggest using cursor macros, allowing you to apply an ability at your cursor without any clicking that would otherwise lead to downtime. To keep it brief, your main cursor macros here are Flare, any projectile CC like Freezing Trap, and Volley. And remember this, Skill Capped is the only service that guarantees you'll climb at least 400 rating. Now we make this promise because Skill Capped really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Think of it like a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Crazy, right? So get started today by clicking on the link in the description. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.